So what are the five best ways to get points during KVK Excalibur Invasion? There are really expensive ways and there are much cheaper ways, so this video will take you through the difference. If you're spending in the game, Amazon App Store can give you up to a 20% discount. Check out this video for full details. If you use one of the codes in the description down below, then I can get a commission, so that will be really helpful for my channel. Thank you for the support. Okay, so I'm looking through my uh, KVK event and the Eagle Eye of Usable spot that I was only 9 million points short of getting the top prize. Really struggled to get online during the day, so uh, when I did finally get online, I was cutting it really, 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 really close. Now, how can you get those points easily? If you've got time, you can do it slowly. If you don't have time, there are quicker approaches that are a lot more risky. So, the five different approaches. Option one, take your main city into the forest around Avalon and let people hit you. Now, it is a very, very fast way to get points. You'll be able to take your entire army into the forest and when you get hit, that means you'll do the most damage you can possibly do. The huge risk of that is you're taking your entire army <laughs> and putting them on the line. So if you get smashed by a big player and you don't have the hospital capacity, a whole bunch of troops are going to end up permanently dead. You'll have some going to Sanctuary as well as your hospital and you will also have some going to your Alliance Hospital. If you're in the forest here and the forest is your own kingdom's forest, you will have access to your hospital and you will have access to your Alliance Hospital. So that is here. So you've got the uh, healing capacity of your normal hospital and you can add to it your Alliance Hospital. Now the other thing about your Alliance Hospital is healing in the Alliance Hospital is cheap, free in fact, if you're patient. You can use healing coins that you can get free from playing the game and those coins can give you all of your troops back. So you can actually literally do this event without losing a single permanent loss and not having to use a single resource to get your, uh, get your troops back. However, if you're doing this with your city, much higher chance you're gonna exceed your Alliance Hospital capacity. So more likely than not, it's gonna cost you resources. And if you have too many troops in your city, you could say, start to face permanent losses in significant numbers. The bigger your army, the bigger your potential losses can be. Sanctuary is only limited in its maximum size. So for me, I've got nearly 6 million troops. If I got smashed in my main city, I would have massive permanent losses. So it's not a great approach for people with really big armies. If you've got a mid-size up to a million, two million, it's possible. Less than a million, yeah, you can probably, depending on your hospital capacity, those smaller armies, you definitely have a chance. The other thing to note is, let's imagine you've got one million spaces in both your hospitals. That means if you've got 1.2 million troops, you can have two million troops, 10% of which might go to permanent death in Sanctuary, 20% if you've not activated the VIP double size for your sanctum. So what's this mean? You would want to get rid of 200,000 of your troops before the attack hits just in case just to make sure those troops are safe. Now you can do that so you teleport into the forest and once you're in the forest you can send out some troops to occupy the land just outside the forest. Uh, perfectly safe from anybody there apart from people in your own kingdom. So if you're not at war with your own kingdom, then that's an absolute safe way of sending off one of your marches. Have it planned in advance, so have it in one of these march slots, the march that you're going to send out. Key point about this march, if you're sending out a march, make sure your dragon is not in it. If you don't have a dragon idol here or a dragon blade in your uh, temporary relics, you want to keep your dragon in your city. You do not want someone to hit you without your dragon being home. So either the dragon blade here will keep your dragon home or the dragon idol will do the same job. It's a cheaper version with slightly less benefits. So when you're setting up your march, your trash march, these are the troops that you want to get rid of. Make sure you unselect your dragon and then set up the troops that you want to send away from your city when you're going to be in there ready to take a hit. Okay, so that's the quickest way. You're going to do the most kills with your biggest army and that gives you the biggest number of losses that you can take. You get points for losses and for kills in KVK. Now, it's really important that you do this right so you don't take massive losses. Here is my video, the full details on how to take your own city, your main city, into the forest, get your points and get home safe. So, option two could reinforce a farm. So send one of your marches to reinforce your own farm or somebody else's farm account or a smaller account or just any account to be honest, doesn't have to be a farm actually, just not your main account. 
So your march you send to somebody else's account, they then, once they've got all the troops that they want, will teleport into the forest. So if you've received troops into your city and you then teleport, those troops stay there. If you send your troops to somebody else's city and you teleport, your troops will come back immediately. That's the difference. So whichever city is going into the forest, click reinforce, click yes, and then send your best march. Include your dragon in this march if your main city is safe. When you're reinforcing a farm, it doesn't matter about wound and conversion. It's a meaningless thing. 100% of your losses will go to wounded. So if you're in your own kingdom, you have your alliance hospital and your normal hospital. But once you've filled those both up, any further losses you take would go to Sanctum, 10 or 20% would go to permanent death. If you've not activated the VIP boost to your Sanctum, 20% permanent deaths. Up to the point that you reach your Sanctum capacity, and once you reach your Sanctum capacity, you will then have 100% death. So keep a really close eye on your hospitals when you're using this approach. How many marches can you lose entirely before you have to start healing? Now you can heal instantly from the Alliance Hospital if you've got the coins available and those uh, that's a really great way to quickly empty your hospital ready for the next round and to get more of those points. So what's the key weakness of this approach? Well it's time. If you're like me and you're sharing somebody else's farm you can each only send 2, 3, 100,000, 50,000, whatever you're sending. It's not your full march. It's way short of your full march. It's also not an entirely p most powerful march you can do. So you're going to get a lot fewer kills and you're gonna get a lot fewer losses, so you're gonna to have to go multiple times. I find myself having to go three, four, five, six, seven times to get my points, and if you've got that farm in the, in the forest here and just nobody is coming, you could be sat there for a long time, and you need to find somebody willing to keep going and then jumping back again, so this is a much more time-consuming way of doing it, but boy, is it safer than approach one. You know you can get into the forest and you will only risk the troops that you've sent. No other troops will be at risk, so you know exactly what's going to be filling your hospital capacity. You will never take more losses than you are gambling with. You know your stakes and that's all you're risking. Okay, so now if we go and look at Avalon itself, you can start attacking these towers. Now, I would say you could go and attack the Avalon, but usually the Avalon will be filled with a full mega rally. Now, full mega rally, you soloing a full mega rally is basically suicide, which is another one of my approaches later in the video. But for now, we're talking about non-suicide. So going after the uh, the Avalon, you're either going to be in yourself, be in, either your own alliance will be in there, or a different alliance. Either way, you're going to be coming up against massive losses, potentially an entire march loss with very, very few kills, being outnumbered 5 to 1, 10 to 1. But the towers, now these towers around the outside, these towers, you're able to uh, send a single march and majority of the time there won't be a mega rally in there. So if you send one big march in there, you'll often find yourself going one, one against one, march v march. Now it might be you're going march v march versus a massive spender and you're a small spender, which means you're going to get smashed anyway. But still, I would rather get smashed by 700,000 you know, best troops in the game than going up against three and a half, four million of the best troops in the game. I'm going to get a few extra kills and uh, yeah, it'll feel a little bit better to not get completely destroyed. And from time to time in uh, in one of these towers, I've actually had somebody of a similar power going after me. They've used some speed ups, got there first, going march for march with somebody who's a pretty good match for me. That's actually, uh, that's exactly what I like. So advantages, it can be quick. You can get a lot of points very fast. You can lose an entire march very quickly. There's no limits uh, for you sending one of your marches. You'll be able to completely send an entire march, no question. Costs, the Alliance Hospital does not apply. And even the standard hospital is limited to your wounded capacity. So you won't get 100% wounded. You will get massive losses potentially. Now you can limit them, so for example if you use your life preserver that can increase your wounded capacity by 30%, you send your dragon, that's got a lot of wounded capacity. In Luna you can also wear your uh, wounded capacity gear. So what is that? That is here if you're wearing the Warmonger boots you can get a 12% boost to your wounded capacity. Only in Luna currently, I'm sorry, I'm hoping they bring something similar into Solar. And then you can also use the Warmonger Ring here. You get another 6%, that's 18% more. You do lose the benefit of having a full set of armor though. So you will have greater wounded capacity, more troops will go to hospital, but you will fight worse. 
So what I will do, what I normally do is have one set of gear which has my wounded capacity in, and my other gear being my battle armor. That way I can see who's coming to hit me. If they're a massive player and I know I'm gonna lose, I switch to my wounded capacity gear, or actually I start my wounded capacity gear, and if somebody is coming who's less powerful, then I will quickly switch to my battle gear. That way I know I've got a chance, my losses will be higher, but I will have much better result with my with my real battle armor on. That is the way to get more points. Slightly more risky though. That's why I always have my wounded capacity gear on to start with, because a really big spender will hit me so much quicker. They'll spend gold without even thinking about it. Somebody in my kind of level, mid spenders, low spenders, no spenders, those kind of players won't probably press that spend gold button to speed up quite as many times. You have more time to think if you're gonna be hit by a lower spender, so then you can uh, make your switch when required. So um, attacking the towers, the other one is if there are if there are farms in the forest. So again, I'm gonna put this in the same bracket. This is attacking into the forest. Problem with this one is if they're using anti-scout, you might not be able to see what you're up against. So attacking those farms, attacking those other cities in the in the forest, you won't know necessarily what you're coming up against. So it's worth potentially sending a march first that you're willing to lose, a siege march just to get enough kills that you get a report back and then make your decision if you're going to send one of your full massive marches and risk an entire march. So it's similar to the, exactly the same as the tower. Here you're more likely to be taking on more players, but odds on they're going to be lower strength players. People playing in the towers will often have a much bigger, more powerful march. People playing on the edges here are usually the lower spenders who need to get their points the easy way using my approach two that I've just shown you. So you're going to be the other side of that coin. Okay, what's approach four? Now this is just suicide. Now it might sound stupid to deliberately lose troops, but there are times when nothing else will do. It's quick, you have complete control over what troops you're sending. You can send them to one of different places. You can either go to Avalon itself, and if you're not in control of it, Avalon or one of the towers where there's a mega rally, you can send your troops knowing you're gonna lose every single one to the man. And uh, the alternative is the big hitters will usually be in here around the middle. If there's a big hitter from another kingdom, you can hit them with your suicide march. You're guaranteed to lose. They've got 15, 20 million awesome troops with massive stats. Every troop you send is gonna die. So what you do that for is, let's say if you've been building siege for the last few months, which I always have one slot for siege constantly building. I've got the resources. What I can do is then make um, take advantage of those extra troops so I can send 200,000 siege knowing they're just going to die. Now the one benefit is if you're sending level six or above troops, then you can activate Breath of Fire. So if you send your dragon with these suicide troops, you're gonna get some kills. Breath of Fire on its own will get you kills. Now that's really powerful. You'll get some extra points and uh, it's uh, a nice way of getting your points faster. Now there is a table, I'll try and remember to put a link in the description for the table of points you get for killing and the table of points you get for losing troops. You get a lot fewer points for killing for losing a troop than killing another troop, but you still get points. So suiciding, it's a great way to control it. If you only need a small number of points, you can do the maths, work out how many troops do I need to send when I lose them all, send that number of troops. It means you won't kill, you won't lose way more troops than you need. So if you're like me, you need 9 million more points, then that is when you can send over an exact point, an exact march, which is worth 9, po 9 million points if you lose them. I'd say we send a few extra troops just to make sure. Benefit to sending it to farms that are near to, near to the edges is it's a short march. If you're sending them all the way to Avalon or a tower, they can take a long time to get there if you're not using speed ups. Okay, other point to note, if you're, uh, if you're attacking in the towers or you're attacking somebody else's city, then your Alliance Hospital will not apply. Your standard hospital will only capture those troops who are covered by your wounded conversion score. So always send your dragon and also use the, uh, the life raft skill here, the life preserver skill here. If you get the opportunity, you can only use it once during each KVK. So be ready to spend half an hour doing all of your suiciding and using this skill. That will save you a lot of troops in the long run. Okay, approach five. This is actually one of my favorite ones, but you don't actually have direct control over this. So point five is playing KVK the way it's been intended. So going after Avalon with a mega rally with your teammates, going after the towers in a mega rally, holding the towers with a mega rally. These are all things where if you're in a mega rally with somebody with awesome stats or you're the one with awesome stats, a big army with awesome stats in here, 
could get you a heck of a lot of points. People will try and attack you, perhaps another mega rally, you'll all get a lot more points. You're risking a lot of troops. There's only your wounded conversion will count. However, in Luna, there's a huge benefit to your wounded conversion that you can use your wounded conversion gear and that will give you that extra that extra reduction. You can get down to less than 15% permanent losses stood behind a mega rally of a major player and still get a lot of kills. You will be using their stats, but you'll be using your own wounded conversion. So that's a win-win. So for me, for K, when he's doing a mega rally, if I can get in, it's awesome. He's got some of the best stats in the game. So that's a great way to get points, but once they've done their mega rallies, you can't just keep doing mega rallies. So there'll be a point at which this approach is running out of steam and you will have to supplement it with one of the four earlier approaches. That's the way to top up right at the end. So those are the five different approaches you can take to get your points in the KVK Excalibur Invasion event. Check out this video here. This is a KVK battle event just to get you in the mood, see some of the different approaches in practice. I hope you enjoy it. I'm English Tim. Thank you for watching today.